Another trick, rule three, is use styles to see, achieve a uh, consistent look. When you use a template, it comes with styles. But if you're just hoping in a regular document, you may want to set up a style for normal text or body text, a normal for he uh, a style for heading one and heading two. In fact, normally, I think in Microsoft Office, when you open up Office, it comes with a style menu. And you can modify those styles and use those styles throughout the document. So here are the styles that happen to be on the style sheet for the template of that newsletter. And notice that there's one for the header, and the heading, and heading two, and headline three, and four, and the mailing list. And so these were designed to be consistent with each other. So I simply used their styles when I did their newsletter. I'm not sure they followed your advice and limited the number of fonts, though. Um, I was very careful which styles I used to limit the fonts. So I was basically, if you, like for instance, I think I was using uh, headline two and uh, body large, and that by itself uh, limited it to two or three fonts. So you actually have to use restraint even when you're using a professionally designed template yeah. instead of... Yeah, because sometimes, uh, sometimes these templates that you get on Microsoft Word tend to be a little bit busy. And sometimes, you know, because they, it, it's sort of like the old Maca, uh, Macamania that happened in the early 80s when, oh, gee whiz, I have all this, these fonts and I'm going to use them all. And, I'm, you know, so I, that's just, that, I'm doing it just because I can. And I think sometimes Microsoft, some of their templates have a little bit too much in their in their uh, newsletters. Uh, like, for instance, my newsletter was simply a one column thing because it's easier for my purposes rather than have it multi uh, images and three column or four column. Rule four is if you do change the formatting, don't change it without a good reason. You know, just so, oh, this, this paragraph I'm going to have in Time Drama, and then this is, I'm going to have it in a courier or whatever. Don't do that. Uh, only change your fonts when you're trying to signal the reader that something has changed or something is important. Like, for instance, you may want to use courier if you are trying to simulate a telegram or a piece of typed text. Uh, you may want to use a different font if you're used for the coded part. But don't change the formatting without a good reason. And in conjunction with Rule 4 is Rule 5, is don't unintentionally change your format. Because when you're importing text from another document, don't import the formatting of the text also. Good question. My next slide tells how. Oh, I did not pay her for that. <laughs> the answer to that is in Microsoft Office, how you do it is use the command paste special. You do something similar in page and everything else. Basically what it does is it, is it pastes the text without the format. And paste special happens to be on the menu, the edit menu, uh, right a little bit below paste. And what it does, since it's got the three dots by it, it will create a dialog box and it'll tell you what, how you can take, paste the special. You could paste it, as, in this particular case, you could paste it as a Microsoft Word document object, formatted text, unformatted text, a picture, style text, HTML format. I only use unformatted text. You've already got to paste it in and you see the thing that's crazy and causing me headaches. Can you still want to do this? No, what you do is you do an undo okay, to, to unpaste it so you and then you do this. this. First and then yeah, yeah, because I'm, or you just get rid of that style. You know, you, you, because, or you could copy the style from the previous text into it. What I usually do though is I, I don't buy, this is, notice this is a menu, move the mouse, dialog box, move the mouse, and then close. That's a lot more keystrokes for me than I like to use. 
So what I've done is I created a, a special macro that all it does is it does paste uh, special using unformatted text. And I assigned a keystroke to this so that automatically, I, you know, like for instance on this um, iBook, it's control hyphen. And, a lot of, and I'm in Word, I hit control hyphen and it'll automatically um, paste, uh, paste in the text unformatted. So that, whenever I see this cringing type of thing, what happened in the case I was telling you about the earlier thing where I had the, the slight changes in the fonts that made me wonder what if, if he meant this to be a quota quotation or something, he had simply copied it from another document. And he had simply cut and paste. And of course it pasted a different formatting than he was using. Contrast is the juxtaposition of dissimilar visual items on the page. Contrast is sort of the opposite of continuity. Sometimes you want to emphasize something by making a contrast with something. And like you might use a different font, a different emphasis. When you do this, rule six is if you use different fonts, make sure the, the fonts are radically different. Let me give you a bad example. Combination. Go from Times New Roman to Book Antigua. I look at that and I can't tell any difference between the two. It, they're very, very, very similar. Maybe Book Antigua is slightly wider, um, but they're not different enough. And if you if you use that for emphasis, it's not going to emphasize it. All it is is going to give them a subconscious feeling that something is wrong, and that. That is not a good thing. A good combination is something radically different. Like, for instance, Times New Roman and Area. Times New Roman is a serif font, which means it has these little legs at the bottom of, of the font and at the top. And readability studies have shown that serif fonts tend to be more readable than not a sans serif font, which means without serifs. And because of this, usually text in most documents, the body text is usually a than, uh, it's usually a serif font, uh, simply to increase readability. And headlines, though, for impact, us are usually sans serif, like Arial or Arial Bold, and they don't have they don't have the serif, and they look radically different. So it's easy to to like, to to spot a head a heading or a subheading, or or a bold aspect simply because the font looks so different. Symmet uh, symmetry is a balance of visual elements on a page. You don't want your page to be perfectly symmet uh, symmetrical, but what you want to avoid is for major imbalance in visual elements. And when I talk about visual elements, I'm talking about box boxes of text or, or figures. And there are two things to remember. One is that color has more weight than black and white. So a, a, a smaller thing, a text in color, has the same weight as a larger text in black and white. Also, images seem to have a little bit more weight than black and white text. And then there's another element to consider, and that is white space, or the absence of text or graphic. That also affects some uh, symmetry. So, as far as symmetry is concerned, just make sure you're not going overboard and being asymmetrical.